Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a pleasure to be here in the Kireki uh, to promote commercial agriculture. As you know, um, we are now focusing uh, entirely on commercial agriculture. Now, what is commercial agriculture? Commercial agriculture means one, that you're full time into that particular business. It's a, it's a business, agriculture business. We want you to see agriculture as a business. Uh, if you're working, let's say, in town, um, uh, let's say you're an accountant or a school teacher, and then in the weekends or in the evening you spend some time, your leftover time on your farm, that's not commercial agriculture. If your source of income is from remittances that your daughter or your son is in New Zealand, or your source of income is uh, from your shop in town, or your source of income is your job at, uh, at FSC mill or somewhere, and your farm is not your source of income, then that can't be commercial agriculture because you won't put your 100% in there. Commercial agriculture is where you are engaged full time. That's your source of livelihood. You grow for the market. You grow for profit. You make a profit or surplus. You take part of it and <coughs> save. Part of it, you use it for your expenses. And part of it, you reinvest in the farm every year. And you compete with others. That's commercial agriculture. Now, Fiji can only grow Agriculture sector can only grow if we undertake commercial agriculture because only commercial agriculture allows surplus creation and also while you are engaged in commercial agriculture, you will reinvest on your farm and you will continue to expand. <coughs> now what I have seen through when I entered from Bani Songo Songo right up to here, I hardly can see commercial agriculture. From that junction right up to here, I've seen about 1,000 acres of good quality arable land uncultivated. Now, there may be a reason. The reason could be that lease is expired, no one has access to that land. The reason could be that your sons and daughters, children have gone, no one to work on the farm. The reason could be that you no longer interested in the farm farming, but your house is there, you are staying. Reason could be that you don't need that area at all, you just need a little bit because your source of income is somewhere else. Reason could be that you are now retired and you just need the house block area. Reason could be that you want to engage in hobby farming, leisure farming. In Hindi, we say, agriculture. Now, in that way, the entire agriculture sector will go down. We will do injustice to the national cause, national vision. We want the country to grow. We want the agriculture sector to grow. We want the agriculture sector to be the base for the rest of the economy to grow. So we want to support commercial agriculture. We want commercial agriculture. And then only we can grow, agriculture can grow, country can grow. Commercial agriculture should be led to be led by agricultural enterprises as a business. We want agriculture business person, businessmen, businesswomen. Now what I've seen throughout Fiji is that farmers are willing to get into commercial agriculture <coughs> if they're given a secure market and a secure reasonable price. 
for any farmer, not only in Fiji but throughout the world, one of the main worry is about whether the farmer will be able to sell the produce. How the farmer can sell the produce? Where is the market? And throughout the world, when the market is promised, market is provided, and market is taken to the farmer, the farmer then starts producing. These are the farmers who want to see agriculture as their future, their livelihood is in agriculture, and they want to grow with the farm, with the agriculture entrepreneur. So today, I'm talking to the agriculture entrepreneurs, the agriculture business person. And I want to tell you that we want to get market to you. We will get market to you. We'll get market to your doorstep. You don't have to worry about where you will sell your product, where you will sell your produce. All you need to do is grow. Grow the product. Now, I've got the CEO of IMA here, and I've got the CEO of Food Processors. I'll ask them to speak to you in a while. But I want to today announce that we will, we are now ready to come to you and pick up your product. We will buy it off your farm gate. We will announce the schedule of when our pickup trucks will come. But you produce what we want to, and we will expand the list of that product over time. In three months' time, we will give you a new list. In six months, additional list, a wider list, broader list, more, more crops. In six months' time, we will give you a new list which, with additional crops. Because we are now searching for no, new markets and searching for more volume within the existing market. So for time being, we've got a short list. Short list of crops that you will produce and we will buy it at a given price and the price will be re revised. <coughs> for Western Division, we will buy okra from you. Of course, we will do the picking once a week. We will give you the schedule of the pickup time. Any amount of okra you, you plant, you produce, harvest, get it ready, we will pick it up from you. We will <coughs> pick up bongo chilies from you. Any amount of bongo chili you, you plant, harvest it, we will pick it up from you. You don't have to worry about going to Rekireki market or Tavua market or waiting for someone. No. We will pick it up from you. Jackfruit, cowpeas, bora, will tell you the variety. You plant. Of course, you may not be able to plant full, you know, 10 acres or 20 acres now. It will take time because you, have, you don't have that amount of seed, etc. But we are ready. We want you to be ready. Tell us <coughs> how much okra you have. We will pick it up. Cassava leaves, <coughs> all your cassava leaves, we will pick it up. Rosella leaf, plant, all those vacant land, plant. Rosella, katabaji, we will pick it up. We will give you a guaranteed price at the moment, two dollar kg. We will revise it when the market improves, we will revise it. But you don't have to worry about going somewhere to town or looking for market, we'll pick it up. How much? How much of katabaji you have? How much of rosella leaf you have? Chestnut. <coughs> Chilies. Jungli milcha. And of course, bongo chili. How much of duruka you have? Where is it? Tell us. <coughs> have it. Get it ready. Tell us. We will come and pick it up from you. Of course, we will expand this list. There will be a few other new items that the CEO of uh, AMA will uh, tell you now. There's a separate list for uh, Central Division. There's a separate <coughs> list for Northern Division. 
and this list will be added. We'll keep on adding communities. We are deepening our market. We are widening our market. We're looking at the export sector as well. But we don't have to go to the export sector. Our market is here right at our doorstep. We're looking at the tourism sector. The hotel industry for so long have argued that we are not consistent in supply. <coughs> We're not producing quality. No, it's not correct. We are producing. We will increase the volume. We want them to buy our product. You go to the hotels. Most of you have gone to the hotel, have stayed there one night, two night, three night. You also have gone to hotel in other countries. Now, if you go to the local hotels here, Denrau area, Coral Coast, did you ever see anyone asking for asparagus or those imported vegetables? No. They go by the menu. When you're going to have breakfast and you had a the fruit platter. Did you say that you only want grapefruit? You only want oranges? No. You only want pear? No. There's a fruit platter. You pick up all the fruit. You go to buffet breakfast. The hotels have to also be responsible. Have to be responsible. They have to understand the importance of you know, supporting our foreign reserve position. And therefore, they should provide to their customers, to the client, the fruits that we have in the season. We are expanding our fruits. We want you to establish orchards. We have established orchards. We are looking, going big time into establishing fruit tree orchards. So that we will provide nutritional security as well as ensure that we have got enough variety of local available fruits in the market. We have asked AMA and food processors, AMA, to um, talk to the tertiary education sector and the hospitality sector, the restaurants, there's a huge market out there. Massive number of students are in hostels in USP, FNU. Huge, massive market. And we want to take over that market. We will buy it from you, we will supply it to them. Thousands of thousands of students are eating in hostels in the universities. We will actively seek and block that market. We've got restaurants and you know uh, catering outlets throughout Fiji. We are actively going to go and sign up with them for you. We will secure the market for you. We will pick it up from your doorstep. We will take it there. You might get 30 cents less than what you get in the roadside stall or in the in Tabua market or Rekireki market. But look the kind of savings you will get, the confidence you have of guaranteed price. You don't have to worry about, you know, if you have a bag of Bora bundle, one bag, you don't have to take that bag, hire a vehicle and go to Tabua market or Rekireki market. We'll pick it up from here. We will also sign up with the uh, uh, supermarkets, supermarket retail chains, so that we will supply the vegetables there. <coughs> and we'll talk to them about replacing the imported vegetables with our vegetables locally produced here. There's nothing wrong with it, perfectly. We will talk about, we'll talk to you about improving quality of the product. But at the moment, we want you to start growing, start cultivating the vacant land that we see. I can see, I can see it from here. All those land out there are arable land, the foothills. It's all vacant. We need to take off. We are also promoting growing of rice. You don't have to worry about where you will sell your rice. We will buy it from your doorstep. All rice that you grow, we will buy it. We want you to grow. We are promoting a new variety of rice, Dangiwe Bao and Sitara, three month old variety. We want you to grow two crop per year. Tell me how many crops will provide you a net return of $800 per acre. You plant two crops in an acre, in an year, you'll get $1,600 net. On an average, 
you can get more if your productivity is higher. It's a high yielding variety. $1,600 net, you will not get some of the crops that you are stuck with. Right? I do not want to mention those crops. So, we will come. Do not worry about where you will sell your rice. As the volume grows, we will establish a mill here. But you do not have to worry about the, whether the mill is here or in Lambasa or in Suva. We will buy the rice, the paddy, and we will take it and mill it and sell it. We are importing about 85 percent of the total rice consumed in Fiji. We get it from outside Vietnam. Uh, uh, we can grow here. We want you to grow these high value crops so that your net return per acre, per year is much, much higher. Do not think about growing one crop three months and keeping your land vacant for the next nine months. Minimum you can grow three crops, uh, two crops of rice, but you can, if you are good, working hard, you can have three. These are year round variety, these two variety, very high yielding, dry land rice. You do not need to uh, you know, have a paddy field to you know, transplant the rice, no, it is broadcasted. Your main, co I mean, I went to Sarwanga. There was a, one farmer said he grew pumpkins. Someone said to the market, "No pumpkin allow him sab khareedega." So he hired a vehicle, put all the pumpkins in that in the in the, in the pickup truck, took it to Lambasa market. Hundred dollars. What ten years ago, hundred dollars charge. Now it will be two hundred, maybe more. <coughs> went to the market. The market vendor came out. So he knew. The farmer is in a weak position because he's got, got it from the Saravanga, from all the way from Saravanga. Now the market vendor will dictate the price. He said, you know, 50 cents per, per pumpkin because you know there's a lot of pumpkin in the market. Farmer said, What do I do? I've come here all the way. I've hired the vehicle. If I don't give him, what do I do with this pumpkin? I can't take the pumpkin back to Saravanga. Who will pay for that vehicle? I have hired picker. So he gave everything left. We do not want our farmers to be in that vulnerable situation. We will pick it up from your farm gate. We will have points here. So we will announce that, that the, in a week, which day, which road our pickup vehicles will come. So we are urging you that let us all get together and go big time into producing for the market. And I want to assure you that do not worry that your crop will go bad. You just follow our list and we will be expanding the list. You know, you may, uh, Setreki CEO will be talking about probably you would want to expand pick up of cassava. We want to buy all cassava. We are buying it at the moment in Suva. So we might expand it to this area. I will ask him to you know, talk about that. Food processes is there. We are now, you know, uh, they are re looking at food processes. We will expand it. We will pick more crops. Well, they'll work closer with AMA. They'll pick it up so that we don't duplicate, save cost, and we'll take it and process it. <coughs> At the moment, they'll take any amount of bongo chili and duruka, and they will process it, can it, and market it.